Do you have a old garage door opener or an even new garage door opener, but you want wireless remote control capabilities? Then this is the video for you. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. As you heard in the intro, I have a very old garage door opener. I have not had a remote control for this for a lot of years and up until recently I have been going just right up to the button on the wall to open the door. Now it's getting to be winter up here in Canada and I would like to be able to park in the garage. Now as you can tell the garage is a little bit full. I've got some other projects I got to do to create space but very soon I will need to be able to open and close the garage door and I don't currently have that function. So today we are going to install a very budget garage door opener. This comes from Amazon. I will put a link in the description and what's so great about this is the high amount of compatibility with all kinds of garage door openers. I did have a Chamberlain MyQ garage door opener. It was a remote controller that allows you to use an app to open your garage door. That worked at our previous house to actually open and close the garage door. The biggest problem that I had with that garage door opener was it actually tried to sync up or program itself as an opener for the garage door which is great if you have a compatible garage door opener. Now I went through a lot of setup to try and get it to work and it was a pain in the butt. And that's where something like this comes in. This is a simple two wire installation. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I set it up. I'm gonna show you how I install it. And I'm gonna show you how to test if this will work with your garage door opener. So you're gonna have everything you need to decide if this is the right product for you in this video. I'll also tell you my impressions about using this device after it's been hooked up and using it. I'll go through all that with you and show you how that works. So let's get going. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. So the first thing you need to do is figure out if your garage door is compatible. Now I know that it's compatible because I have a very, very old doorbell style garage door opener button. If you pop this off, you'll see two wires on there. Some of the newer ones are addressed and this would not be compatible with that. So how do you find out if it's compatible for sure? I'm gonna show you right now. So what you wanna do is go to the garage door opener where your control wiring is. Now on mine, this right here is the control wire. It'll go from here through the ceiling over to that push button over there. But all we wanna do is simulate pushing the button. So on here, again, mine is very, very old, but all I wanna do is short out the two wire points on there. So I'm gonna use my pliers here to do that. And all I'm gonna do is open them up. I'm gonna to touch these two contacts. And when I did that, you can see the garage door started opening. And then I can touch it again. Now it's closing. So if you just did that test with your garage door opener and just a simple pair of pliers, now you can use anything. You can use needle nose pliers, you can use linesman's pliers, you can use a scrap piece of wire. In my case, I use these wire snippers. You can use anything. You just want to bridge the gap between those two contacts. If you're not sure which ones to go to, just simply look for two wires coming in like you saw there. If you have two wires that you can see coming off of your garage door opener, going to a button, odds are this is gonna work, but just to be sure, jump those two out, see if the door opens. If it opens, you are ready to purchase this and install it. So now that we know it's gonna work, let's move on to the install. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick unboxing of this so we can see what comes inside. I've never actually seen in here, so this will be handy. We got one box here, which has Excellent. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. I wasn't sure how they did this and I'm not too happy about this, but it is what it is. It is what it is. This will be a magnetic limit switch. This is what it will use to decide if your garage door is open or closed. So when these two are together, it would close the switch and send the signal to the box so that it knows. And then when it opens, obviously it would do that. So set that aside there. We got this guy here. This is the actual unit. So this is the unit here. 
It's got just a USB plug that powers it up. It's got a plug right here that our magnetic switch that you just saw would plug into. And it's got this little pigtail here, which will hook up to those two terminal strips that you saw me jump her out before. And if I had to guess, this is gonna have the power brick, just like that. And it does, so this has a USB power adapter, like that. And not a bad one, five volt, 1000 milliamp or one amp, which is enough to power this device. And we've got instructions. So if you had not watched this video, you would be looking at these instructions going, what the heck, how do I hook this thing up? But since you're watching my video, we don't need those. With that unboxing out of the way, it's time to do the install. I'm gonna focus on the actual box first, and then I will look at routing the cabling for this to the door. So what we need to do is just loosen these. Oh, don't, don't short that out with your screwdriver. The garage door will open. We just need to loosen these contact screws and then attach the wires from the box. Now it doesn't matter which one goes where. I'm going to try and hold this while I tighten this. So I'm gonna just, since I'm doing this one handed, I'm gonna just hang that up there like that. Okay, first wire is attached. Now it's time to loosen the second terminal strip and then we'll wrap the wire around that as well. I'm gonna clean this connection up a bit while I'm here. Okay. Now my wires are connected, that's off of this box, and it goes to the same two screws that we had it on before. Now what we wanna do is test that the garage door opener still works. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna push the button. We can see it goes up and it goes down. Since we know it still works, now is the time to run our magnetic switch to the door. So I'm gonna just back the camera up and show you what I'm doing while I'm doing that. I'll get my editor to speed it up. I've got as far as I can right now because I've got a unique situation where my garage door opener has been drywalled into the ceiling. And what I mean by that is the electrical plug would normally be right there. There'd just be a regular 120 volt outlet. It's not there. And I think that's because it's up above the drywall. So I will need to cut out the drywall real quick to try and figure out where my power even is that feeds the garage door opener. But let me show you really quickly what I did so far so that you can mimic what I have done. So here I've mounted my magnetic switch. So I've screwed the switch part onto this board here. And then I've attached the magnet part to the top of my door. When the door opens, this switch will open up and this wire right here will send the signal to my opener controller that the door has been opened. Now you can see my wire comes across here. I have just attached it by putting some screws in there and then pulling it pretty tight. It does still hang down as you can see, but it's tight enough and out of the way. So there's no issues there. The extra wire I actually coiled up and then used the wire itself to wrap it around to hold this nice and neat. And I've attached it with screws there. You do not need to do that, you can do whatever you want. The actual box itself, I've mounted again with drywall screws here, just by, I didn't screw them through the plastic, I just screwed it into the drywall so that it holds it in place. That way it's nice and accessible. And then the wiring that comes off of that comes down to the two terminals on the back of the garage door opener. And then I plugged in, I also plugged in that two way switch. It only goes one way, the, the plug will only go one way, so you can't screw that up. So you can see now the next step will be to power it on and connect it to Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go through that in a minute as soon as I've cut a hole to figure out where I can actually plug this thing into. So I'll be back in a jiffy. Now is a great time to talk about drywall holes. You'll see I cut out a really big hole and that is because it's just as easy to fill a big hole as it is to fill a small hole. If you make a small hole, odds are you're gonna need to make a lot of small holes. So I've made a hole big enough that I can see up in this space and hopefully figure out where the heck my plug is at. So I can see up in there. There we go. The box is plugged in. So now I can patch my hole just like that. Now it's time to move on to 
syncing it up to the app and actually testing it out. So now that we've done the install, we've got it powered up. The light is steady. It's, it was blinking, but now it's on steady green and it is time to download the app to your phone. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up the Play Store and we're looking for eHome Life. There it is. We're gonna install that app and then we'll come back once it's installed. One eternity later. Okay, now that the app is done downloading, we're gonna open it up just like that. And then we're gonna hit the plus button up in the corner here and we are gonna say smart garage door opener. I have the MSG 100. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna sign up for eHome Life and we're gonna sign up. So now it's asking, would you like to install a device now? Well, I, yeah, I would like to install a device. And again, I said Smart Garage Door Opener MSG 100. I'm gonna skip the compatibility check because I already showed you guys how to do that. You bought this because you already know that it's compatible, so I'm gonna skip that. So now it's asking me, well, what kind do you have? I've got this kind that they show. So I'm gonna hit next. Power up the device, wait about five seconds until the status light is slowly blinking amber and green just so you guys can see this is what blinking amber and green looks like it looks more like green and light green but that's amber and green so i'm going to say next it is blinking amber and green so now it says it's going to connect to the device and this may take a few seconds so it's trying to find this device and connect to it it wants to know location services sure while well, using this app will allow that okay so now it has found a device and it says we have found the me ross mg dc84 yes connect to the device connection successful light still blinking again this may take a few seconds okay so i have lost my wi-fi connectivity because it's connecting directly to that and now i'm going to call this garage door now it wants to know my Wi-Fi. Okay, it says we're finished setting up your smart garage door opener configuration. That's it, your home network. This may take a few minutes. One eternity later. So we're just waiting for it to finalize the initialization. So it's connecting to the internet. It's checking a bunch of stuff. My app is now disconnected from it. So I'm back connected to my regular Wi-Fi. And then I guess any minute now it's gonna confirm my Wi-Fi connection. So the light up here has gone solid green as you can see here and the app says start hardware deployment. So we'll do that, let's do that. Uh, close your garage door at this moment then power off our garage door opener for safety reasons. Okay, this is now showing us how to test the sensors. So it says connect the cable, yes, excellent. Move the sensors together or apart. The status LED will blink and the door icon below will show the current status accordingly. So here I am up here and the app says the door is closed. If I move the sensor there, so I've moved it and it now says the garage door is open. When I put it back, it says the garage door is now closed. So I'm satisfied that we're in the right location. Now I had not screwed this on yet because I wanted to make sure that it was good because I wanted to see if I could move away a little bit from that. You don't have to be right up against it as you can see here. It's even with it right there, I got a big gap and it still registers that the sensor is in place. So that's great news. So that means I can fix that in place. So we know that it's working. It says it's working. So I'm gonna say, yes, it works. And then it's going to say, find a position, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I've already screwed it in. So it's telling me now put it in place. And I'm going to say, okay, next. And it's saying, okay, connect the control thing. We've already done that. So if you didn't watch this video, this will walk you through it again. And there we go. We did all that. We've done all that. Got it. Excellent. Now it is time to test this. So I'm going to say garage door closed. And now it's opening. There you can see. The garage door is opening and I've got a little graphic on the screen to say garage door is opening. Now my sensor, because it's magnetic, actually stayed in place even though I didn't screw it in place. Now I'm going to say close. The unit beeps to let me know it's closing. And the garage door closes. Once it closes all the way, it should tell me that it's closed. There we go, closing and closed. And that's it. 
So now if I wanted to, I can open the eHome Life app and it'll always show me the garage door opener and I can just hit that button. It opens, or I can hit that button. Now it has to go all the way open before it lets you close, it looks like. So once it's open all the way, it says it's open. And now my wife's coming home. Now I can push close, and it closes. So now it's time for a quick Q&A about this device. First of all, you're probably wondering, do I need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi as the garage door opener in order to open and close it? The answer is no, I haven't been connected to Wi-Fi for all the testing that you just saw me do. The next question that you're probably going to ask me is, Anton, what is the range? The beauty of it is, as long as you have Wi-Fi on your phone or you have an internet connection on your phone, you can be anywhere in the world, check the status of your garage and then close it or open it, whatever the case may be. You can also sync this up to your Google Assistant or to Alexa and just issue a voice command. So while you're driving home, you can say, hey Google, open my garage door. And if you programmed that command in, then your garage door would open up. So you, can, you don't have to touch anything. Otherwise you can open the app and it'll work just fine that way as well. You can run this app on multiple phones as long as you're willing to share your user login or you can set up a unique app for each person and then you'd have to sync the garage door opener. That becomes really messy and I'm not even sure if that's totally possible. So that's pretty much it. The install is actually really quick. It took me 45 minutes to do this, but that's because I've been talking to you guys the whole time. If I wasn't stopping to film and everything, I would have had this install done in about 15 minutes. It's a very easy install. The other thing you might ask is specifically about that sensor wire. So I did it at the top. If you can't get your gap just right at the top, you can do it at the bottom of the door. I do not recommend that. It is so much easier to do at the top, but you have plenty of extra cable wire to get it down to the ground if you needed to, or if your garage door opener is a lot further away. This will also support multiple garage door openers. So you may have noticed I have two garage doors. I can get another one of these install it on that garage door opener and then that one would open as well and you could just label it as garage left and garage right or whatever his and hers whatever you decide his and his whatever whatever you decide it's up to you so i hope that helped you out we'll see you again hey thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video we hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.